Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Today we are going to be working together to make a comic strip. And what we're going to be doing today is not so much of you guys following along with me and doing everything I'm doing. I'm going to be talking to you about a bunch of different things that go into making your own comic strip. From things like making your own characters, to making the speech bubbles, and how to make your panels kind of laid out so that they make sense with the story. So this one is going to be more just kind of me explaining how to make something like this, and I'm going to show you a few examples um, with drawing, but really you're going to be kind of designing your own with this one. If you watched my video from yesterday, we talked a lot about how you can draw different emotions and that will help you out a lot in our project today. So if you didn't watch the one from yesterday, you might want to do that one. It's up to you. Um, what you will need is you will need some paper. I would recommend getting more than one sheet of paper so you can have some stuff to sketch on. Definitely have a pencil and an eraser, and then anything you want to color with, markers, crayons, color pencils. You don't necessarily need to color in your comic strip, but you for sure need a pencil and an eraser to get started. So let's get started and let's talk about the different things that you will need to make a good comic strip. All right, guys. So like I was saying, today I'm not just going to be doing all this on here and having you copy the same thing because I want you guys to be able to make your own comics. And there's a lot of things that go into making a good comic. One of the most important things about making a comic strip is you have to plan. So one of the first things you are going to do and you're going to think about is you want to think about the characters that are going to be in your comics. So I am taking this away for a second and I'm going to put this down right here. This here was my paper where I sketched out my ideas for the characters that were going to be in my comic. I decided to use some of my pets for my house because I wanted to pick characters that had different personalities and different ideas about things. A comic strip is a lot more interesting if you have more than one character and if those characters are also unique and different from each other. And I was thinking about how I can make them look different. So here is my one cat Phoenix. He's very nice and sweet but he's always kind of nervous. So I gave him those eyebrows that we drew yesterday where they look kind of scared. But he's smiling still. He's just nervous. Then I have this one, is Leon, he's a little smaller, and he has those angry eyebrows, but he's smiling because he is naughty. I was trying to think how I can show that for someone who doesn't know my cats, or my characters, I should say. If someone looks at these two, they can kind of figure it out based on how I made their faces. I also have this little mouse here, because I have a pet mouse at home too. So I sketched them a couple different ways. I drew them standing on all four legs. I down and just to try to see if I could draw them the way that I wanted and so I could figure out what I want them to look like when I make my final thing. So when you are sketching, definitely you want to do everything in pencil first. Um, it doesn't really matter which way you have your paper. I guess before I have my paper this way, so I'm just going to turn it. But if I'm trying to think of a character, maybe this time instead of drawing up my cats, I'll draw myself. When you're trying to sketch out your character, think in your head, like, what do I want them to look like? I'm going to draw a circle. I'm drawing fast, and I don't care if it looks kind of messy because this is just practice. So there's a circle for my head. I'm going to do some simple little dots for eyes and a smile and a little nose. Sometimes when I'm sketching out a character, sometimes it helps me to actually do a stick body first, it might help you too, and then you can add like around it, draw two lines for the neck, and make like little sleeves and a shirt, like that, and then add a neckline for the shirt, and then make the little stick legs into some little pants, and some feet, and add some round hands. So that might help you to draw a stick person first, and then of course we're going to add some hair, so I'm just going to do some wavy lines for my hair. So there's a drawing of 
like me. Um, if I wanted to make maybe like an evil character, I'm gonna draw another circle here. This time I'm not gonna do the stick figure first. I'm gonna try um, just drawing it out this way. So I have my shoulders. This person's also gonna be wearing a shirt kinda like mine, but I think to make them look evil, I'm gonna have them wear a little cape. So I'm gonna draw some stuff. Here's a little cape blowing in the wind. I gotta draw their legs. When I do these sketches, I try not to think too hard and just kind of draw quickly because it is just a practice so I can see how to draw my characters. So if I want them to look evil, I'm gonna give him those angry eyebrows. And I'm gonna give him pointy ears. Maybe he's a vampire, I don't know. There's some hair. If I was practicing my sketches and I thought these characters looked good, then I could go on to my next step, which is thinking of your story. I'm gonna move this aside for now. Thinking of your story. So I have my characters sketched out and I know I want to have some sort of story to go with them. So start off with a simple idea. If you try to make it too complicated, what's going to happen is you'll have to make too many boxes. So start with something very simple. I was thinking of um, Leon, this one here, wanting to do something bad and Phoenix being nervous. And I wanted it to be like a funny comic strip. So I thought, well, maybe Leon wants to go on an adventure and Phoenix is nervous and Leon kind of is mean to him and then he'll get scared by something and that's the end of the comic. So I tried to think of that and something that, that helped me, that might help some of you, writing out a little script for yourself. So I wrote down L for Leon and P for Phoenix, because his name is spelled with a PH in front. And I just put the words that I thought I would use. I also put numbers so I could think of how many boxes I would need. And then I had this to look at while I was working on my comic. So there's some of my planning stuff. I had this to plan with, I had this to plan with, and then after you've kind of decided on your story, guys, then it's time to work on making your boxes for your comic. If you plan out your story ahead of time, you can think to yourself how many boxes you might need. One thing you can do to make your boxes is you can take your blank paper and you can take a ruler. Um, I don't have a ruler with me right now, but I'm just gonna take the edge of my marker box. You can take the edge of something straight, a ruler or whatever, and make your boxes however many you need that way. Or what I did, and something that's probably a little bit easier for a lot of you, is I actually took my paper and I folded it in half, folded it in half, again and if you unfold it now you have four boxes so you can make your comic strip with four or if you fold it one more time so this is three times total then you will end up with eight boxes like what I have here so the nice thing about folding it, you guys, is that when you fold it, the boxes are all pretty even for you. You can just trace over them. The not nice thing about folding it is you don't have a lot of choice about how big the boxes will be and how many there will be. So it's up to you. I folded this one and I just drew over the lines with marker. Now another part about making comics that is super important is dialogue. And dialogue is when characters are talking, okay? And something you can do to help show how your character is feeling, besides just their faces, like their eyebrows or their mouths, like here you can tell he looks a little sad. Another good way to do that is making your dialogue boxes different shapes. So a normal dialogue box, when someone's feeling pretty much normal, happy or sad really, a normal dialogue box is usually an oval with a little point coming out. 
this would go towards someone's mouth. Okay, so that's a normal dialog box. Usually if someone has that kind of little bubble, they're usually feeling okay, maybe sad, but they're not usually feeling too strongly anyway. If you want someone who is angry or scared or shouting, you can make a dialog box that's not an oval, but kind of spiky, like that. or something to show that they are feeling stressed out or angry. Like in this one, I did a spiky bubble. And then these are more normal. Another kind of dialog box is actually if your character is thinking or dreaming or, th or just in th saying something in their head and not out loud. You do a thought bubble by doing a few little circles and then kind of shaped like a cloud, a bunch of bumpy lines. And they can be thinking about something in their head or dreaming or imagining something. And then one more kind of dialogue box that I'll show you guys is if you are having a narrator tell your story, meaning it's kind of like someone telling your story but it's not the characters you can do a box that is just a rectangle like this and you could write something like today in let's make up some place we'll say in Mitchell land made up place today in Mitchell land dot 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 so that would be like if you're thinking that someone is kind of telling the story, but you're not trying to show the characters saying it. So that would be more of that kind of box. So there's lots of different ways that you can show how someone is feeling with the way that you show their words. Another thing that you can do to show something important in the comic is movement Movement lines are meant to show that a character is moving fast because it's not always easy to show that in a drawing. So let me draw a little person here. Okay, so right now they kind of look like they're just standing there. But if I do a few quick lines behind them, it looks like they're running off somewhere. So those are some things that you can add to show movement. Another thing to think about when you're making your boxes, you guys, is think about making some things big, close up, and some something small, far away. So in, in one of my boxes, I might show two people talking. And here's their bubble, and there's that bubble pretend there's words in there, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there might be two people talking. We can see both of the characters, but maybe in the next box, this character is gonna be the only one talking. I don't need to show both of them again. So I'm just gonna draw that person even closer. You could add more details. You could show maybe their hairstyle or if you wanna add like, you know, like earrings or something. When you get close up, then you can add more details, right? I zoomed in on this one, and there's another speech bubble, and let's pretend there's some words there. And you can also show people are far away, so maybe in this next one, I'm going to show these two people again, really small off to the side, and I'll show maybe where they are. So maybe they're right at the edge of a forest. They're at the edge of a forest, and I don't know, I'm gonna draw a little fire here. Like they're about to go camping. So I know that was a lot of stuff, and maybe for some of you this isn't quite like the kinds of videos we've been doing before, so you might kind of be feeling overwhelmed, but I just wanted to show you some different ways that you can kind of work on your own comic strip and things to think about. It's important to plan because it just honestly makes it much easier. 
Now, the main thing after this, guys, after you think about all this stuff, you planned out the story, what they're going to say, what they're going to look like, the main thing after that is to really just start drawing in your panels. So here's my paper that I had before with my boxes. I'm gonna trace over this. Alright guys, so while you are sketching right now, I'm going to show you my comic and you can see the different ideas that I used to get my story's point across. Alright, so in my comic here, it goes from left to right, that's usually how comics are. In this one here, Leon is saying, let's go on an adventure. And because it's the first thing that's being said, it's on the top. And then Phoenix is saying, I don't know, and he looks unsure. You can look at his eyebrows, he just looks nervous, and the mouse is sleeping in this one. Now here, Leon is close up, and he's saying, oh, come on, it'll be fun. I zoomed way into his face on this one because I didn't want these two panels to look the same. And also, since Phoenix isn't saying anything back at this point, I didn't need to have him in there. Now here, here's our little thought bubble and he's thinking about the different things they could do. He's saying, we could climb a mountain, or go surfing, or ice skate, and I do tiny little simple drawings of each thing that Leon is thinking about. And now this one is just Phoenix and our mouse, who just woke up, and Phoenix is saying, I don't know, that sounds dangerous. Now Leon's kind of mad, and he's saying, stop being a scaredy cat. And you can see Phoenix looks pretty sad here. He's got a frowny mouth, the sad eyebrows. I have that spiky dialogue box to show that he's shouting. And then the mouse is popping up on Phoenix's head. You see the little motion lines to show that he's going fast. And Leon is scared by that. See his eyebrows change, his mouth changes, and he's saying, eek. And then here, he's shouting, mouse, and he's going into the bush. And then you see Phoenix here, for the first time, he doesn't look nervous, he's kind of laughing. And he's saying, who's the scaredy cat now? And you can see Leon hiding in the bush. So, the reason I was telling you guys about all these different things, the way that you can make your dialogue box, um, going in close ways because these are all things that I used on my comic to try to share my story. So try using one or two of these things when you make yours and just have fun you guys because you're making up your own story about whatever you want. Alright guys, I know this was a little bit longer of a video because I was kind of explaining a lot of different things. I hope that you still had fun kind of coming up with your own thing and using some of the ideas that I shared with you. Tomorrow we will be going back to doing another just kind of step-by-step -step drawing video so you can just follow with me if you prefer that instead. And I hope you guys had fun making your comic strips. I hope that you get to make your own about whatever sort of thing that you want. It could be about you or a pet or a superhero. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. Bye!